Some things in life are hard, and doing them sucks. You ever try going out in public? Freaking terrifying, I tell you. Figuring out which way the USB-A plug goes into the USB-A hole? That's always a nightmare. And don't even get me started on folding my laundry. My mom makes me do it and I die literally every time. Literally. I die. I'm dead now. Because of laundry. Hope you're happy, mom. And then when it comes to playing retro games on your Steam Deck, oh baby, that can be a whole load of suck if you don't know what you're doing. Trying to install emulators by yourself and front ends and adding your games to your device and BIOS files. What even are BIOS files? Sometimes it feels like you have to be a retro game scientist to understand some of this stuff. If only there was a simple one step, one application to do retro game stuff where you can just install that and then add your games and boom, you're playing retro games as if you knew what the heck you were doing. Yeah, if only. A long time ago, in a far off land, by which I mean about a year ago, here in Canada, I made some videos about Emu Deck on the Steam Deck. I really, really love Emu Deck. It's a nice and powerful and it has a ton of options and quality of life features. It's like a whole emulation suite, but it does take a bit of knowledge and work to get up and running. I made a guide of how to install it and to this day I get questions all the time when people get stuck in this or that spot in the process or later when it stops working and then how do you fix it? And now instead of trying to answer how to fix every little problem, my response has become just to install RetroDeck. Which brings us to this. RetroDeck, obviously. The idea behind Retro Deck is that it's a package of stuff, like a purse full of gummy worms. It's one bundle of emulators and a front end, all contained in one application. It uses Emulation Station Desktop Edition as the front end, and RetroArch for the older stuff, and other emulators for higher end stuff. ESDE is just in charge of managing your ROMs and launching the emulators, so you can stick with the default like controls and settings, which are great. And it has this fancy little radial menu with easy access options. Or you can customize the emulators if you want to. Set up your own hotkeys or whatever. That's what I like to do. Another thing that RetroDeck will do is keep your ROMs and BIOS files neatly stored in one single place that's easy to access and easy to add stuff to and remove stuff from. And you can store that one folder full of stuff on the Steam Deck itself or an SD card and freely move it back and forth if you need to. Ultimately, it's very similar to Emu Deck, but more contained, if that makes sense. Yes, it does. And one big benefit to RetroDeck is that it uses standard ESDE files and folders. So if you have an Android device that uses ESDE, you can bring over your games and your scraped media and games lists, and it'll just work right away here on RetroDeck, which I'll show you. I appreciate that. As someone who has a million devices, having the ability to just bring over my game library that I already made with all my favorites, lists, and stuff is super convenient. The install process is stupid simple, which is good for me. I'm pretty stupid. All you need to do is boot into desktop mode on your Steam Deck and open the, the Discover application. And there you'll search for Retro Deck. When you find it, click install and then wait for it to install. When that's done, you can launch Retro Deck by just searching for it and then, then launching it. First thing that'll happen is it will ask you where you want to store your stuff your ROM files and your BIOS files. And there are pluses and minuses to both, really. You can put it wherever you want. I'm going to recommend you store your games on your internal storage for one reason, because then you, you, they're always there on your Steam Deck. You always have thousands of retro games, no matter what SD card that you have in there. That makes the most sense to me. But if you want to store them on an SD card, ain't no one going to stop you. Certainly not me. I have better things to do with my time. Seriously important things. So many of them. It's pretty crazy how many things. Then once you select your storage location, it'll ask you for some extra stuff that, that if you want to do it. If you intend to do PS3 emulation, you can add the firmware for that now, but you can also do this later. I'm going to leave this on the default and select confirm. And then when that's done, it'll ask you if you want to add retro deck to Steam. Say yes for this, because you'll need a way to access this when you're in gaming mode. And then it will give you this helpful little message about where to put your ROM and BIOS files, and then it'll warn you that you're in desktop mode, don't worry about that, and then you're in retro deck. The install part is done. Yay! Yay! But now you got a few things to do, because retro deck is empty. No games or anything. First things first, you should download a theme to snazz up the place. That's done under the UI settings and then theme downloader. There are tons of themes here to choose from, but really, we know you're going to choose the TechDweeb theme, right? You can customize it too. Choose your color scheme and then boom, there we go. Looking mighty spiffy. Thanks. 
Thanks, tech dweeb. Who said you could talk? Shut up. Sorry. Okay, so now we're done with Retro Deck for a bit, uh, so let's quit the program and do some other stuff. We already added it to Steam, but let's make it look nice when it's in our library by adding some artwork. Head to Google and search for Steam Grid DB Retro Deck, and the first result will be this page where you can download the art. You'll need two files, a vertical one and a horizontal one. Then over in Steam, you can find Retro Deck. It'll be at the top of your recent games list, and you can right-click it and select Set Custom Artwork, and then pick the vertical game image that you downloaded. Next, you can click on it to open up this page. And in here, in this big empty area, right click and you can set a custom artwork for up here too. And then there's one more we need to do. Enable the recent games shelf if yours isn't showing. And then the horizontal version of the uh, game cover will show up here and you can right click this and choose a custom image here too. This is all so that later when we go to gaming mode, Retro Deck looks all nice and fancy in our games list. Instead of just a sad gray box that reminds you that deep down, we're all just an unconfigured icon waiting for someone to assign meaning to us. And now that we have Retro Deck all set up, the only thing that we're missing is our stuff, our games, and our BIOS files. So let's add that. However, if you have an ESD device with scraped artwork, like an Android device or whatever, you can add that stuff too. And your games lists and all that stuff, you can bring it all over. I'll show you that. But I can't show you where to find games and BIOS files. I can't tell you to Google the ROMs and BIOS mega thread or 1G1R ROM sets or RetroArch BIOS pack. It's just, it's not something I can do. And it probably wouldn't even work if I did, probably. So let's just assume that you already have everything you need. The way you get stuff on your device is, well, there, there really isn't just one way. There's lots of ways that you can do this. You can download everything right on your device through a web browser. If you have your games somewhere else, like on your computer, you can copy them to an SD card. Or if you have an SD card from some other doodad with games on it already, you can use that. Or you can plug in an external hard drive or a USB stick. Today, I'm going to show you how to do it with an SD card and a dongle. This is actually my main SD card from my Android devices. It's a one terabyte SD card and I move this between my devices so that I don't have to copy my games back and forth and all my save games and everything are on here. You don't need to have this ready. You can just download games and copy them to an SD card. But if you do have this setup, you might as well do what I'm going to do here. Shove this into the dongle and then shove that in the dongle hole of your Steam Deck. Immediately, the deck will ask you if you want to mount and open the SD card contents. So do that. And then if you chose to store your retro deck stuff on an SD card, find that in the list and right click it and open it in a new tab. And if you chose the internal drive, then select the home directory and open that in a new tab. And then open the deck folder and in here is the retro deck folder. And in here is everything related to retro deck. It's all in this one folder. And this is where we're going to put stuff, all of our games and the BIOS files if you need them, and also any extra stuff like scraped media and games lists. You just need to make sure they go in the right folders here. So let's do the ROMs first. Here in the Retro Deck folder, I'll open the ROMs folder, and in here is a bunch of folders. Each one of these represents a retro game system. The folders are all set up the same way here as they are on Android if you use ESDE. So over on my Android SD card, I can open up the ROMs folder and it's the same directory names. I'll just do the Game Boy systems right now for demonstration. GB, GBC, and GBA. I'm going to select those folders and copy them and then over on our Retro Deck ROMs folder, I'm going to paste them. It'll tell us that the folders already exist and you can select Apply to All and then Write Into. Depending on how many ROMs you're copying, this could take a while. And if yours aren't in folders with the same names, just copy the ROM files into the folders of the system therefore. If you just have ROMs, then you're done at this step and you can skip this next part. But since I also have scraped game art and games lists, I'll do those too. It's in this same place in the ESDE folder, but it's in downloaded media and I can select the GB and GBC and GBA folders and copy them and put them in the same place in my retro deck folder. I'm going to paste them. And the same goes for the game lists files. Also, you might have noticed I didn't actually copy over any BIOS files. I'm just doing the retro systems and most of them work without a BIOS file. However, you might need a BIOS file if you, uh, for certain systems like Sega Saturn, Dreamcast, maybe Final Burn Neo. If you have BIOS files, you can copy those into the Retro Deck BIOS folder, or you can walk on the wild side and not bother with BIOS files. And if you ever get an error, then you can just look up that BIOS that you need and then add it. And at this point, we're done with desktop mode so we can reboot the Steam Deck to get back into game mode. 
And then when we launch Retro Deck from the game mode, uh, there, there we go. We're, we're up and running and everything's working great. You should be able to see your games and your game art and your game lists if you brought those over and you can launch your games. Everything should just work fine. You can exit your games by pressing the start and select buttons at the same time, and you can open the RetroArch menu by pressing in on both sticks at once. So uh, we need to talk about controls and hotkeys and stuff now. Depending on whether or not Steam automatically selected the official Retro Deck controller config, you may or may not have hotkeys assigned. To get those working, what you can do is open up the Steam controller settings and then select the new controller button layout. There are two main options you'll want to consider. I'll show you the easy one first, which is the official template by Retro Deck. Go with the full version there. Select that and then press X to apply the layout and then back to Retro Deck and if you launch a game, now you have hotkeys. For instance, you can hold select and the right bumper and left bumper to save and load your state. It's select and right trigger to enable fast forward, select and Y for Retro Arch, that sort of thing. Also, this is neat. Uh, there even is a radial menu on the Steam Deck trackpad. You can put your thumb on there and you can get access to some options and there's some extra stuff for some of the more advanced emulators on there. You can see a list of hotkeys on the Retro Deck wiki li link below if you want to know what everything does. However, I personally do not like these hotkeys. They're not my preferred hotkeys and I don't want to learn new muscle memory here. So instead of using the official Retro Deck controller configuration, I prefer to set up the Steam Deck uh, as a generic controller and set my own hotkeys. The problem is that then you don't get that radial menu and you might miss that, especially on the standalone emulators. You might need to configure some stuff yourself there. Since this is meant to be an easy guide, I'm, I'm going to suggest that you stick with the official Retro Deck controller layout and just use those default hotkeys. But if you do want to tinker, then you can totally do that and set it up exactly the how you want it. And if you ever mess stuff up and you want to go back to the original settings for any emulator, you can open up the Retro Deck configurator from the main Retro Deck menu and in here you can select select reset components and then select whichever emulator that you want to reset and you'll be back to the default retro deck settings for that emulator. You can also reset the entire freaking retro deck itself, everything back to default. That won't mess up your ROM files or your save games or anything by the way, it just affects like the, the emulation system. And speaking of the configurator, there's actually a ton of more advanced stuff in here. Again, this is a beginner guide. I'm not going to go over all this stuff, but I highly recommend you open this up and peek through all the stuff you can do under the hood with this menu. You can move the Retro Deck folder back and forth from an SD card to the internal storage, select some presets to enable borders or widescreen hacks for the systems that support it, manually open up the emulators to change settings and add firmware files for like PS3 if you didn't do that during setup, set up your Retro Achievements accounts here if you don't want to do that yourself through RetroArch. I don't recommend tinkering in here if you're a newbie, but for tech dweebs like me and maybe you, heck yeah, go nuts in this menu. Lots of neat stuff in here. And real quick, I want to show you how to scrape your game art if you didn't bring that over yourself. And that's just done under the scraper menu. In here, you can select your service. I recommend Screen Scraper, although you'll need an account. At the very least, you'll need a free account. But if you use a paid account, then you'll get more, more daily scrapes. That's what I do. Enter your Screen Scraper username and password here in account settings, and you can choose which type of content you want to scrape. And when you have all your options set, just click start and it'll scrape. <laughs> Depending on how many games you have, this could take a while. One more thing, real quick. Retro Deck also has Steam ROM Manager built in, which is a program that lets you add retro games to actual Steam itself. So they'll show up in your Steam library with your other Steam games. I do not like to do this personally. I have thousands of retro games and I don't want any of those in my actual Steam. I like my retro games to be separate in their own little world, all contained in their own retro game place on my device with their own front end. That's why I love Retro Deck. But if you do want retro games in your Steam library, what you need to do is favorite the games that you want there, and then go to the Retro Deck Configurator, and then Steam Tools, and Automatic Steam Sync. Then when you exit Retro Deck, it'll make Steam library entries for all your favorited games, if you're into that sort of thing. And that's basically the basics. Not much to it, really. You probably could have figured it out yourself, but you watched the video anyways, and I hope this kind of beginner guide helped you out and maybe gave you some good tips and tricks. Obviously, I couldn't show you everything. Just enough to get started. There's some extra steps that you can look into if you want to get like Switch and PS3 working. It's all super straightforward, but if you get stuck, definitely check out the Retro Deck Wiki linked below. 
in the what's included page. All the specific emulator info is on there. And at this point, I had a whole section of my script up for this video where I just gushed about how great Retro Deck is and how easy it is to set up and how it's so nice to have it as its own container with everything all together, nice and clean, and how useful the tools are, how good the presets are, and how they give you the ability to set your own settings wherever you want, and how much I love it. But I'm out of time. I need to go dig a hole in my backyard to bury some stuff. So I'll just end by saying, click the thumbs up button if you liked the video, or don't if you didn't. That's it for me. I'm TechDweeb, thanks for watching, Bye bye